Welcome to the Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast. You don't have to know history, you don't have to know wrestling, you don't have to know matches. My belly's just a little big, my eye is just a little big, but brother, I am bad and they know I'm bad. There is no revolution. You are truly the future of Lucha Underground. I got it, I got it. How about a little heel turn? And no, if, if they piss somebody, if they took somebody off here, well then, you know, there goes their career. Well, don't piss anybody off. Hello everyone and welcome to the Let's Talk More Wrestling Podcast. It has been a long time since I have said that and it feels damn good. Of course this is the podcast where we review pay-per-views. And by God, are we releasing this one a lot earlier than we usually do? Because we've got plenty to speak about when it comes to the Royal Rumble. And of course, throwing throwing these reviews over the top rope like they're nobody is, of course, Turbo Tony. And I can't do that alone. I have to do it with my faithful companion, Matt Marsander. How are you doing? Good. I actually shocked that I was able to get that much, get it all watched in a day. Mm. Around work as well. Yeah, like, uh, we've rushed this for you guys. Basically, we're recording this, like, like normally we record it like on a Tuesday and a Wednesday, get it out on a Thursday. Yeah. But we're like, no, all right, let's just do it now. It's the Royal Rumble, we can't let it wait. Exactly. It was a bit easier for me to watch this because I watched an hour as it happened. I went to bed and watched the, the the next two hours in the morning, so it wasn't too bad for me. I'm guessing, obviously, you, you were catching it within your lunch breaks at work, so you... Well, no, I got really bad because I was like, I don't start to work till 11. I dropped the missus off to work for 7. Like, do I go back to bed or do I watch half of Rumble? <laughs> Well, Half ch- of Rumble it is. <laughs> uh, as as they say in Indiana Jones, you choose wisely, man. Yeah, you that's choose, it. <laughs> choose wisely. Uh, so, of course, we're talking about the Royal Rumble, the first pay-per-view of 2016. The first match ever, Royal Rumble match ever, that will um, de- that the champion will be defending the, the WWE World Championship in Roman Reigns. And obviously we're giving our predictions and what we thought the um, the the winners of the match were going to be on the last episodic episode. Episodic episode? That's just stupid. This is the kind of randomness that you can expect on these uh, Let's Talk More episodes. We just kind of lay back and talk shit, which is exactly what I did there. But um, we're going to be going through whether or not we, we got our predictions right. Uh, all in all, uh, I, think we, I think the pair of us had a pretty decent night for predictions. Well, no, actually, I'm looking through some of them. Maybe not so much. <laughs> no. Maybe not so much. Uh, but we'll, we'll, obviously, we'll get into them as we go. So, Matt, without further ado, let's get into the pay-per-view review. Royal Rumble. In Orlando. I can't remember the last time they've had a pay-per-view in Orlando, but quite a big um, arena that they had this in. That's it. Yeah, again, Matt, I was a little bit down that I, I, I like the graphics going into this going into this pay-per-view. You know where they had the oh the, like the stone features and things like that. I thought they looked really good. Yeah, they did. But I was a little bit of a shame that they didn't have anything. I mean, anything. I mean, I know now. I'm I shouldn't get upset about it really because it's just how things are. But <laughs> you you weren't expecting a special Titan Tron, were you? I, I don't know. A little, little, little bit of me. You were a fool. A little bit were of a me. fool to wish for I, such a thing. I know. I know. Um, but regardless. Uh, the show kicked off with a tag team match that myself and Matt did not watch. Um, the winner of that match got the right to be thrown over the top rope within 30 seconds in the actual Royal Rumble match itself. Yeah. And winning that prestigious honour was Mark Henry and Jack Swagger. That's who I picked. Who did you pick? I didn't care. Oh, you just didn't, you just didn't, you didn't give a fuck. Okay. Not particularly, no. I thought it would be Mark Henry because they were going to give him, you know, they kept saying on Raw, oh, we're going to give him, oh, it's his last Royal Rumble. And I thought, oh, they're going to make him have at least a decent run. And obviously, towards the end of the Rumble, yeah, that didn't exactly happen. So, there we are. But still. But yeah, we don't watch the pre-shows. I actually, well, actually, I like, I watched the last five minutes of the pre-show. And I was pretty sad to see that Byron Saxton was uh, promoted above Jerry Lawler on pay-per-view duty. Yeah. Which... If we if we hate him enough on Raw, guess what? We get more of them this week. That's right. That's right. So, looks like that's what they're going to be going for. I mean, the, the very thought of Byron Saxton doing commentary for WrestleMania, just, um, I, I don't quite know how that's happened. But if that is the case, then... 
you know, someone has never lucked into such a prestigious um, situation than uh, Byron Saxton in that particular booth because he is he is uh, well he's, I could say JBL as well to be honest but at least he had a career going into it so that, but... anyway Matt let's talk about the actual event from where we started watching the the event kicked off with Dean Ambrose versus Kevin Owens in a last man standing match for the Intercontinental Championship yeah we did. And Jesus Christ, Matt, did these two guys go out there and obliterate each other? Jeez. Oh. Did they not? Great. It's great. I loved it. You loved the violence. You're getting into the Lucha Underground spirit now. It's coming, you know, the season two is this week. You've got a passion for violence, right? That's it. Courage. That's right. Well, obviously in WWE here. This, Matt, I thought this was a... I was not expecting these two guys to go... I mean, you expect Ambrose and Owens with the rivalry that they've had. You can expect them to go a little bit off kilter. You know, they're going to go a little bit overboard. This was like... I, I was worrying that they were going to basically, like, brutalise themselves here. Like, it got to a point I was like, Jesus Christ, they are taking some hellacious bumps here. It's going mental. Yeah. And it never let up. Especially that... Um... Like the bowling ball into the barricade. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what's the, the name of that move? Um, the cannonball. Cannonball, that they call that's it. That's it, the cannonball. Um, bowling like, ball. That, and even then, though, Matt, even though that's crazy, that was one of the relatively milder yeah. spots in the match. I mean, it, I just re- remember it because it was the first of many holy shit chants. That's right, that's right. Um, it, I, I, there were, like I said, I, I, I'm not going to go through all of the spots in this match because there were far too many. But if you want to see a big uh, a match where two guys are basically just like out trying to outdo themselves on how much they can have a devastating fall, then this is pretty much the match that you're that you're looking for. Oh, right the here. finish! Oh, yeah. I thought I thought it set the tone of the night though. This match, I thought that these guys went out there and put their bodies on the line. Sure, but. I mean, this is the, exactly the sort of match that you need to open a show. Gets everyone warmed up, right? Gets everyone. Yeah. I mean, everyone was into this match. So, if you look at it in that case, then it then it did its job. It did fine. That's what a curtain jerker match should be, right? That's it. It's out there to get them warmed up. Yeah. If it's if it sucks, it generally doesn't bode well for the rest of it. Exactly. You have got to set the tone for the rest of the show, and I think they did that very well. And, uh, yeah, as you say, the ending two spots here. I'm going to talk a little bit about the ending two spots here in this match. I will say it was a good match. You will enjoy it. But let's talk about the ending here. So, basically, two different moves back-to-back. And they're basically the final moves of each guy, but one of them ends up winning. And Kevin Owens has... What is this? It was like a capture suplex, isn't it? But he turns it around into a sort of top pro brain buster. You've seen him do it before. You kind of know what I'm talking about. But he does that through a table. And guys, just from hearing that, that move alone without any table looks dirty as fuck. This move through a table looks destructive, devastating. To the point that, Matt, I kind of... And I know this is a bit nitpicky, so really, guys, I'm not that worried about this. But, Matt, that should be a move that finishes any match. Am I wrong? It doesn't matter even if it matters if it's a last man standing match. Like that is Especially at that height as well. Yeah. I, uh, Ambrose was lucky not to have been killed, let alone getting up on, you know, <laughs> getting up for 10, which he does. Yes. And it's maybe it's a little bit here where um, it's uh, a part of the problem here, I think, that uh, eventually down the line, Ambrose has had this problem before that the crowd response is going to diminish to the sort of things that are done because of, um, you know, he keeps... I'm trying to explain this well, but I'm not really getting there, but... Basically, when they kick out and they manage to survive moves like that, it diminishes the 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 move the, itself. The move itself, right? And it is. You look at it. Even looking at it, go and look back on the replay, Matt. It's scary when he does that. It's like, wow, that's yeah. You know, that should end any match. Any match doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter who it's on. That should be a finish to any match. Absolutely no question. But it's not. Ambrose manages to get back up. And then he chucks Owens off the top rope. He does a flip and lands through two stacked tables. Um, the Owens, the, obviously Owens had set up. <laughs> exactly, right. So he goes through and, you know, it, uh, to, to, to be honest, man, I don't know about you, I thought that that, while it looked devastating, did not look nearly as bad as the, the previous move. You know, that, yeah. Maybe that's Actually, just... do you know one thing that I really liked about this one? Go on. It was about... 
where I think he, had he taken like dirty deeds or something. But the only reason that Owens wasn't counted out is because the fool from apron to floor let him drop his feet. Oh really? <laughs> I just thought it was quite good. I was like, oh, this is it. Like he's not gonna. He like rolls out, but he's not gonna get back up. He sort of just manages to just roll enough. Yeah. It's like it's like he's dead. He has to be. It's like he manages. Yeah. Just. It doesn't matter how you do it, Matt. As long as you get your feet on on solid ground, that's all that's that matters. But obviously, after that that spot with the two tables, he is unable to rise to his feet, and Ambrose retains the championship, which. Uh, I know it went against a lot of other people's predictions, but, um, I, well, I, I know I predicted Ambrose to retain. Did you predict that as well? I think you did. I don't remember. I, I believe so. I think you did. Um, I think you were thinking about going with Owens, but in the last minute you went with Ambrose. So we, we were all right on that one. It looks like Ambrose is going to go forward. He's going to have whatever title match. And this is the end of the Owens and Ambrose deal that they have going on. And that's okay. Uh, Owens technically has quite a quite a wide variety of different feuds he can walk into after after oh, following the rumble yeah, yeah. Uh, realistically if you want to do it any sort of way there's basically three different rivalries he can walk into on raw tonight so we'll see we'll see how that goes but good match to start off the show that's exactly what a, a curtain jerker match should be absolutely next match is the tag team championship match the new day versus the usos so this is the birth of Francesca too. Francesca lives on, or is it Francesca Harder? Maybe I don't know. What would be the sequel to Francesca? I guess Francesca too. Yeah, it's Francesca too. Francesca yeah. Harder. That's the worst one I'm calling it. So obviously I was quite happy, and everyone was happy. I, I thought it was quite good. Like, the, like let's take a moment of silence and bow our heads and slow. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I have to admit that I, um, I actually, I cracked quite the smile when he comes out and Kofi's like, "But what about, what about the original Francesca?" And then like uh, Xavier just look, kind of looks into the camera and goes, "Well, you know, a man has needs." <laughs> and it's like, what? <laughs> it's like, careful now. <laughs> some, uh, it, it was some inanimate object uh, affection going on right there, but. Uh... Uh, you know, I'm happy, Matt. Everyone knows that I was a big fan of Francesca. I was very sad when she when she was so tragically cut down in her prime. So Francesca too may may the legend live on. And everyone was having a great old time, Matt. Everyone's having a grand old time, uh, dancing with the new day, enjoying Francesca too's debut, the real debut on this show. No matter what anyone really says, yeah. Take Screw that. everything else. Screw it's everything. all about Francesca too. Of course it is. And then the Usos come down and they uh, they interrupt the celebration. And for that, I'm never going to forgive the Usos. Sorry, they're, 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 I just don't have time for them anymore. You just you just can't do that. Matt. You just can't do that to the New Day and Francesca too. Just you just can't do it. Oh. So I turn my back on them. Yeah, <laughs> shun them. I shun them. Yeah, that's the, that's the way it goes. Uh, I don't know about you, Matt. I thought this was a good match again. But when you stack it up to the rest of the card, this is probably the most lax match of the event. Would you agree? Yeah, I could agree with that. And it's not... Like, people may look at that and be like, oh, guys, you're kind of pissing on this match a bit. No, it was good. It's just the entire event was a very solid event. So this is probably the one that uh, you're looking at. It was probably the, the... I don't want to call it the worst match. It was the most lax. People weren't as into this match as they were some of the others yeah. at certain points. Um, I, I don't know about you, Matt. It's quite I, odd to say that, but it's like, it's not the bad one. It's just... Yeah, it's... Yeah. yeah. I guess the problem is with it, Matt. With all the other matches, I always looked at some point that whoever was wrestling the champion... Because you had four championship matches before the Royal Rumble match, right? Yep. Um, whoever was wrestling the champion, they had a shot at winning. But I never really felt that way when it came to the Usos. It never really felt to me like, oh, I think they're going to do the change. I always thought that New Day were going to be the one that walking out here. Yeah. But maybe it was just me. You actually picked the Usos to come out. And yeah, win I was the fool. Did you notice halfway through this match kind of where it was going then? I'm no, I was like, I was I was a fool. Yeah, yeah you kind you of see where it was going. But good wrestling... I just wasn't as invested as maybe I hoped I would, but still, good stuff. You know, they continued on um, on what was a overall quite a solid, quite a solid uh, event as a whole. Oh yeah, Kalisto 
versus Alberto Del Rio for the United States Championship. Don't know about you, Matt. Maybe this is a bit, uh, you know, people can feel free to argue with me here. But I thought this was probably the best match that these guys have had, which you would expect considering the amounts they've been wrestling each other recently. But I thought this was a... Uh, uh, better than the match that Kalisto first won his championship on. That's just my opinion. But what do you? Yeah, think? I could agree with that. Yes, yeah. I thought it was a good, good, solid match. But the finish, I did not see coming. I have to say, because um, mm. I thought the way they were going to do this was you'd have Del Rio win back the championship, and then he would retain it, you know, with the rematch clause, and then he'd go on to do something else. But it looks like they've got other plans. It does make me wonder, though, Matt. Um, because the the implications of the finish of this match, I'm, I think, are more interesting than the match itself in terms of us explaining it. It's a great match. I thought it was very, very good. But Kalisto wins the ma- uh, wins the title back here at this event in a very enjoyable match. So why did they do this uh, hot potato with the ta- championship, having Del Rio win it back? Uh, I don't and, know. And Kalisto. It's it, it's false. It's wrong. It shouldn't have been the case. The, the way I would have done it, Matt, is that you get Kalisto that beats Del Rio, and then Del Rio's like, well, I never took you seriously, so at Royal Rumble, I'm going to beat you and take my title back. And then yeah. he loses then again. And to make that it way, legit. That way you're in exactly the same situation that you were in here anyway, except the fact that you've had random title changes kind of everywhere. But maybe that's just me being a little bit too traditional. But fair play to Kalisto. I honestly thought, Matt, my, this is probably the, the the prediction I was most sure about and most shocked that it happened, that um, they were just going to, okay, get Del Rio to have his win and Kalisto's done his done his dues for the month, right? He's 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 been a challenger for the month and they'll move on with something for Del Rio. But... That's it. Well, it'll probably swim around with the League of Nations for the moment. Yeah. I mean, I quite liked it because this whole match was a very much an underdog tale. They've been they've been selling the same story in each of the matches. They've just been getting better at doing it. Yeah, you know, um, and I think I'd come to the added um, shock that I don't I don't think anyone thought that Kalisto was winning this match. They're gonna they're gonna do us in tomorrow, Matt. I, 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 on, on Raw, they'll switch it back. They're gonna switch it back. It'll be a rematch, and Del Rio wins it. And by the end of this rivalry, they'll both be like fifteen time United States champions. And just have the to fact that they were already like. Already referring to Kalisto as a two-time champion. I was like, he's not really, is he? Yeah. I think when they try and add up and stack up the championships like that, I think it loses something a little bit. Like, one good title reign would always live longer. Like, people constantly forget how many times Kofi Kingston has been intercontinental and United States champion. And the reason being is because they weren't very memorable. Yeah. Um, doesn't matter how many times you were champion. So, But they'll happily remind you that he's, like, a six-time champion. Yeah, they'll, they'll they'll remind you, but it doesn't add as much weight, you know. I think like people always talk about CM Punk's like over the year, like four hundred whatever day title reign more than the rest of his title reigns combined. Really, yeah. they'll, they'll, they'll know they'll remember that more. So, so, but still. Uh, but yeah, I do I do recommend this match. It's good stuff by both guys, and hopefully, because I mean they've been wrestling each other nonstop for about basically about three weeks on Raw and SmackDown, just over back and forth. They're probably going to have another match on Raw, and hopefully that's it. Because, like, while I've enjoyed these matches, there's no reason to just keep doing them. They basically had singles match after singles match after singles match after singles match. People will get bored. Uh, it's, it's only because these two guys have been pulling out good matches that people haven't been getting bored yet. And the yeah. fact that you and me don't watch SmackDown, of course, so that kind of helps. But it will get boring quickly if they just decide, okay, well, let's do another month of Kalisto versus Del Rio. Obviously, they... Well, I said obviously they won't do it, but I, I'm hoping they won't do it. We'll see. The worst thing is, I'm just thinking to myself, they better not. <laughs> they better not. Because people just get bored of it, and eventually people just won't even be caring about Kalisto as champion. You know, they just, they just won't want to see it. So. That's it. But there's a lot of things they can do with Kalisto, and hopefully they can. There's a lot of interesting matchups they can use with him. One question, though, Matt, which is maybe, maybe a little bit early, but. Do you think that this is maybe them passing that title on to a more mid-card guy so they can go back to using the United States Championship as they had done before Cena had got it? Which I, I hope, hope they not. don't do. I hope. Don't, maybe I... Maybe let's, you know what, guys? Just forget I said that. Let's just move on and hope Tim, for the best. Don't voice it. Don't. You'll make it real. I'll, I'll jinx it. I will jinx it. 
So this moves on to the last singles match of the night, which I was quite glad was Charlotte and Becky Lynch. I was like, okay, cool. They're getting the uh, de facto what would normally be the WWE World title slot on this, which mm. is before the Royal Rumble, which is um, pretty cool. Um, again, Matt, I, I, I enjoyed this match. I thought it was good. Um, I do have some problems, so I'll be interested to see what you have to think. Do you want to just let? Do you want to just let us know what your thoughts on this match was before I nitpick just ever so slightly? I enjoyed this match. Mm-hmm. My main concern currently stands: is that it for Becky? Yeah, I I firmly agree. We'll, we'll go through what happened. Let me explain reasons why I have a few problems here. And it's with Becky. It is actually with Becky Lynch, which is I. It's just these. Let me explain before I go into this. This match, I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. So don't take these nitpicks too much to heart. But I, ha- I did make notes of them, so I'm going to say it to you here. I dislike, Matt, how sometimes before a move, Becky Lynch kind of doesn't look like she knows where she's going. There was a few points here, maybe even in the early start of this match, when they were doing, like, um, you know, they were doing... Um, you know, doing hip tosses and stuff like that. Or oh, well, arm, arm drags. drags. Arm drags. Yeah. And um, it looked a little bit when she was doing that, she kind of didn't know where she was going, where her feet was, and what she was doing next. And it looked like she was a bit indecisive. It it went away as the match went on. Maybe it was just nerves, but it was still there. And hopefully over mm-hmm. time she gets that out of her. Because unfortunately that's a trait that follows her a little bit, even though she's a fantastic pro- professional wrestler. But it's just, you know. Flair, Matt, gets involved here, and he fully transitions into a dirty old man. Like, <laughs> landing a smooch on Becky Lynch. He, la- he he laid a smacker on the Irish woman, did he? And uh, I'm not going to blast him for doing so, because at the end of the day, he got to kiss Becky Lynch, and the rest of us didn't. So, <laughs> How can we hate on him for that? Exactly. He's the kiss-stealing, limousine-riding, you know, son of a gun. Um... But I'm sure he enjoyed that anyway. But uh, and that got a big reaction, by the way. Everyone was like, "What the fuck? Like, like what?" And even got JBO, who's just like, "Well, yeah, he's a kiss stealing son of a gun, and that, he can't. And that's the that's only it. thing he can that's do. That's what he does. That's what he does." And then obviously towards the end of the match, when it looks like Becky's uh, Becky has the disarmor on, uh, he puts his jacket over her head. Oh no, no, not this bit. I, do you know the one thing I really dis- didn't like about this? Go on. Surely the referee could have just gone, huh, what's that jacket over your head, Becky? Yeah. You fool. Instead, no, Becky holds onto it against her face, like, ah, it's got me, it's got me. (laughs) I thought it was a little bit silly that, like, I know it's a distraction or whatever, but even still, like, you've got the champion in the, in the, um, the disarmor. Something gets mm-hmm. thrown on you. Just keep the damn thing on. You can always remove it after she's tapped the fuck out, but... That's it. I can clearly feel that I still have it locked in. Yeah. She's not going anywhere. That's it. That's it. Um, so... But regardless, this is all nitpicks. I did enjoy the match. I was a little bit sad that Lynch lost, considering they had told this story, and even played up at some degree, that Lynch had learned Charlotte's te- uh, her, learned her cheating ways, right, and was able to negate that at some period yeah. of the match. But obviously, at the end, she wasn't able to, because of Flair. And while I thought what happened afterwards was really fun, and also sets up a future match that everyone's going to enjoy, it's just going to happen, yeah, Matt, I agree with you. It makes me worry about Lynch because she had gotten over really, really well. I, I thought that they were going to give her the championship here in this match, and obviously that wasn't the case. But afterwards, Sasha Banks comes out. You hear her music, and it's not Team Bad's horrific music that they have as, that, as their intro now. It is Sasha Banks on her own, Yep, which was a good pick, by the way, not to have her come out with the Team Bad guys. And she comes out, and she kind of plays up that she's actually, like, helping out Charlotte. She even kicks Becky Lynch out of the ring. And they do their little handshake that they've done from NXT back in the old days, right? And then just as Charlotte's about to leave the ring, all all happy that she's got a championship, and uh, Sasha's come down to help her out, Sasha then obviously hits her with the back Uh, no. Yeah. Locks her her into the the bank statement. And... um, it looks like she's obviously going to be gunning for the for the title shot. Yeah. That's it. 
which is all good. I'm mean, I'm fine for that. And obviously, Sasha Banks being back as she hasn't been on TV for about a month is good. And hopefully, they can use her like a title contender that she always was. But for some reason, when she was brought up on the main roster, they forgot who she was, sort of thing. And they're obviously going to be treating her more like a face. That's just how I naturally perceive it. Yeah. But let's go back to Lynch. Lynch then is on the outside, crying her eyes out. She's lost her, t- her chance, chance. It looks like this, she's not going to be involved in this title feud any further. I honestly thought one of the positives in this in the whole Divas division at the moment was Becky Lynch. I thought she got over great. Oh, yeah. And they'll be proper dicking on her if that was the case, if they just suddenly just go, mm, no. Yeah. Um, now, maybe they could do a triple threat. Obviously, that, that I mean, uh, that, that would be fine. But... I don't know, it looked a little bit to me like, uh, like, uh, it was a little bit sad. I was like, she's clearly got something going. She's earned the response that she's been getting and she's been performing yeah. well. And this could, all, 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 all of these statements could be negated by WWE coming out on Raw tonight and making a great new storyline for her that doesn't involve the championship. And there is ways that you can do it. But, considering how WWE and their track record, I am right to be somewhat cautious. Oh well, yeah, definitely. We we can hope that we can hope that. So, so it's like I was thinking to myself, like I kind of hope this leads to like a triple threat at Mania, maybe. But I don't know. I think I kind of fear that that would be like right. Sasha's here to the away with you, Becky. We'll we'll call you when we need you. Yeah, yes, yeah, so, um, it it may end up being like maybe you might not even see Lynch for a while. You know, that may mm. be the thing. And I sincerely hope that if they're doing Sasha Banks and Charlotte for the title, they've got to keep Sasha on her own. Like you, you, you can't put her back with Team Bad because the whole team dynamic has worn out it's on people. Dead. You just can't do it. She, the reason why this works so well is because she came out on her own. She was Sasha Banks. She wasn't Team Bad. She was Sasha Banks. The yeah. Sasha Banks from NXT. She wasn't a Team Bad member. Like in in one like literally like three minutes of her being in the ring. She was more the Sasha Banks of NXT than we've seen since she got called up to the main roster. Like, this is the closest yeah. she's been. And she didn't have to do that much. That's the funny thing about it. But we we'll see how it goes. And clearly, we know, we already know, we, we know this already, that Sasha Banks and Charlotte is a match that will work. It will be fantastic. It will be awesome. And they're banking on these girls because they know that they can do the job. That's fine. It's completely okay. So, this leads us to the... Uh, the big talking point of uh, this review. The Royal Rumble match. The first time that the WWE Championship will be defended in the match. Not the first time that it's been put up in a match and you can and you can win the title. Of course, Ric Flair won it. But that was when the title was vacant. This yep. is when the title was being defended by the number one entrant, Roman Reigns, who was soundly booed. Like last year, he was booed coming out. Anything involving Roman Reigns and the crowd were completely against this guy. It's the most negative we've seen a crowd against Roman Reigns in months, dare I say. That's it. Exactly. Pretty much, I was going to say since Mania, but that's not really the case. But it has been for a, while, for a fair while. He's, he's actually been on a fairly positive, like on the receiving end, a quite positive crowd responses, but... Nope, not today. I think it's because they uh, people were expecting Reigns to go from one to the end and actually retain the title, which I said back in the prediction that would be her, her, a horrendous idea because it would turn everyone against him again, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm glad that that wasn't the case. We're going to go through what happened here anyway. So let's talk about. What we'll go try and we'll try and keep it in order. We're going to end up messing up here. We're going to, we're going to skip over a lot of the random entrants because you know no one really cares how long Curtis Axel lasts in the in the Royal Rumble this year. So, but of course it didn't take long. Number three, in 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 fact, before a new entrance music hit, the crowd went silent. Roman Reigns doesn't un, doesn't. <laughs> there was a it. lot of the fuck. Yeah. And then suddenly, ah! that's right. The the camera hasn't even panned to the um to the stage yet, so you don't know who's coming down. But suddenly you hear this absolute eruption. It, I I would call it a pop, but the word pop just doesn't give it justice, Matt. It it's, was it's an, a bang. It, <laughs> if it, it it can't be a pop, it's a bang. Yeah, it it, it, was, it was. Once these these fans had realised who was coming down the ring, 
it was a it was a Royal Rumble moment that none of them would, and I will never forget. It was surreal, and of course, we're talking about the debut of arguably the greatest in ring competitor in the world at the moment. Arguably, I said, AJ Styles. He has come to WWE. This was his debut, and he was received like a hero when he was in the ring, Matt, with Roman Reigns. They were treating him. Like, he was the saviour, the ultimate saviour against the the ultimate threat, right? That's it. That, this was Hogan against Andre, right? And fucking AJ Styles was Hogan, right? But, you know, back in those days. He was being treated like a hero. And Reigns obviously was being soundly booed for that. Uh, and, Matt, I thought that Styles, obviously, I mean, you, I, I don't think I need to say this, but I thought he made a great account of himself here. I think that spot where he took a, a flat, bump from being flipped over you know he, uh, i don't know who did it but he got flipped over and the air the elevation aj styles did for that bump he he was taking he was selling here on a different level to the majority of the other people he was making people in there look like a million dollars with some of the moves they were doing on him and he got his fair share of offense in i thought this was a fantastic debut i really did i thought now he, he lasted 25, 30 minutes. He got to probably around about the 20th entrant, and then he got eliminated. Yeah. And some people were like, oh, that's so crappy. I don't look at it that way. You know, I think that you came in number three. You lasted till 20. Like, people keep thinking, oh, one to 30, that's like a regular thing. No, like, three to 20, that's a pretty decent deal. You know, lasting that long. I don't think that's too much of a problem right there. I think he had a decent debut, and... I've got no problem with him being eliminated the way that he was eliminated. So, I think it's just people, when he came out, they just, suddenly they get too overexcited. They're like, oh, they, they, he's going to win the entire match. And he's going to, you know, they got a bit overexcited. And I thought he had a great account of himself, Matt. I thought he did fantastic. Oh, yeah. And the thing is, he it was great to have him around. Because, like, there was quite a few sort of, like, indie pops. Yeah. That went on a bit later on in the night. And there was a few interesting parts, obviously, with people where he's wrestled before. You know, getting yeah. involved, playing into his elimination. When Kevin Owens is the one that eventually eliminates him, and that's apparently going to be his first feud. We don't know, but apparently so. Um, That'd be worse. I tell you what, Matt. In terms of big surprises in, in this Rumble, in terms of what will be remembered as a huge surprise entrant, I mean, I know everyone kind of knew it was coming, but for, it wasn't, you know, we, can, we still call it a surprise because we didn't know for sure, right? This is probably one of the most memorable... Rumble moments in recent history, without without a question. Him coming out in the way he did. Matt, it was surreal just hearing Michael Cole say the words AJ Styles, let alone That's call him... weird. You know, call him being in the match. It was... It was weird, right? A good weird, but it was weird, right? That's crazy, and it's like, Styles, like, do you mean Styles? Why are you... You shouldn't be talking about... This is so weird. <laughs> yeah. It's like when Sting, you know, was having his first match in WWE. It, it was it was weird, but a good weird, right? It was it was different. It broke the norm, which is what we're so used to. Um it was awesome. It was fantastic. I have watched him the walk down, the big you know, the, the him coming out, him wrestling for a bit of reigns, because I've got like a big clip of like a five minute clip. Um about you know, eight times. Yeah, already. I just thought the response itself and the fans. No one was more over in this match than AJ Styles. I think that's pretty... Throughout the entire... Yeah. Yeah. He was the most over guy in this rumble. And it was awesome. Chris Jericho topped the times this year. He lasted over 50 minutes. That DDP yoga is not playing around. That's all I can say right there. He's still got the stamina. Reigns, of course, did have longer... But he was out of the match for a huge majority of yeah. the match. So I don't, I don't take that as, as it being the same. Let's talk a little bit about Reigns before we get into the rest of the stuff. So Reigns, he's getting promptly booed, Matt. And they do a, a bit here where he gets almost like written out of the rumble because the League of Nations come down. They drag him out and they drive him through the table. Rusev fucking flattens him through a table. Oh, yeah. Which looks brilliant, by the way. Looks awesome. They get a stretcher. He decides not to go in it, but he does go out to the back. Now, I don't know if WWE was planning on this to be like the, to get him, the fans more behind him, but it just came over to me when he re emerged at the end of the match 
that I really hated him. No, but to me, Matt, even then, even if I like, I like Roman Reigns, you know I do, it just came off to me like, he just got a free rest for like 20 minutes. Yeah, like, yeah. I know he got hurt, but like, and people are like, how is he still out here? Like, you've got commentary going, how is he, how is he even out here? And I'm like, he had a like 25 minute fucking nap backstage. Like, I don't want to root for this guy. <laughs> like, I know it sucked that he got attacked, but, you know, he, he's been able to rest all this time, you know, why... I don't know. I thought I was a bit crappy still. It got the fans more against him than than on his side. But yeah, I think it was also because people were fearing like that he had just gone out for a twenty five minute kip, and then he comes back out, and everyone's like, "Great!" And now he's going to fucking win. Yeah, that's uh, that's what everyone was thinking. Which I'm glad that they went with the ending they eventually went with, which we'll get yeah. to in a sec. Let's talk about some other things before we get to that ending. So Kofi had his moment again. He got saved by Big E. What was so funny is that he's on Big E's shoulders and he goes around getting drinks from the crowd while he's taking a little bit of a, of a nap. You know, while taking a little bit of a break. The only thing is that when he actually did get eliminated, like, no one like no one even knew he got eliminated. Like, yeah, especially, like, <laughs> like, you had Cole. It's like, I think he's been eliminated. <laughs> yeah, Kofi's yeah, not here in we there. Go, here we go. Let's, let's show him. Yeah. So, there's that. Brock Lesnar, Matt. Let's talk about him. He came in. Big pop for Lesnar. He came in, and this is at a point where they were selling that the uh, Braun Strowman, Luke Harper, and uh, Eric Rowan were dominating the Rumble. They were throwing people out left, right, and center. He comes out, suplex City, and he eliminates all of them. All of them are gone. Yeah. But literally, as soon as he eliminates the last guy, I think it was probably Strowman, um, Bray Wyatt is the next guy to come out. And when he does, he orders the other guys to come in. And they eliminate Brock Lesnar. They get him over the top rope. So he's gone. He's eliminated from the from the Royal Rumble. And what I thought was a bit weird, Matt, after this is happening, considering how vengeful Lesnar can be, how angry he can be when he's felt when he's wronged, right? He just remember, left. Yeah. Like, remember, Matt, when he wasn't given his rematch against Seth Rollins for the title after last year's WrestleMania. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. He fucking killed Michael Cole and a, and, a, and a cameraman. Here he gets dumped out by people he's already eliminated. And I thought he was going to come back in and say, well, if I'm gone, Bray, you're dead. I'm taking you with me. I don't care what's going on. But he just, yeah, he even looked at Bray Wyatt and just walked off. I was like, what? That was a bit weird. The thing is, though, I am quite looking forward to any potential... Like, this is going to be the thing. Like, we're going to get Lesnar Wyatt, and I'm quite looking forward to the promos. We get it! You, we finally get it! Do you remember all those, like, the years ago when we were like, <laughs> I really want Bray to have a promo off with Heyman. um with Heyman. Yeah. We look like we're getting it. I, I, I think we're getting Lesnar against the Wyatt's at WrestleMania, a four and one handicap match. I think that's probably what you're getting now. Um and like I said, with people going, Well, you know, why don't they have Bray against Lesnar? It's because uh, you know I think we will get Bray against Lesnar. I don't I don't think so. I think it's gonna be four on one. I don't think it's I think at WrestleMania if they do Bray against Lesnar, people have been conditioned to believe that Bray just cannot survive. You know, he just he wouldn't be able to beat Lesnar two on one, three on one, and then four on one maybe they're saying, Well, maybe the odds would get yeah. against Lesnar. I maybe. I don't know. But we'll see. But that's why I see it. regardless, guys, Lesnar is feuding with Wyatt or the Wyatt family at at WrestleMania. That's where it's going. I think that's the plan that they're going for. So, the other big surprise, or not so surprise, depending on how uh, much you've got your finger on the pulse, is Triple H coming back as the number 30 entrant. I, I heard a great idea just before the Rumble, Matt, that... You have 30 guys come out, Triple H is not out, and then Vince McMahon comes out once, you know, it's down to like the last two or three, and says, actually, I forgot, this year we're having a number 31 entrant, and Triple yeah, H yeah. comes down. I thought that would have been pretty cool. But still, I'm not going to nitpick too much on that. Comes out as the number 30 entrant, and suddenly, <laughs> it gets a bit weird, because you've got Triple H in there, who is like the biggest, you know, he's the authority, right? People hate him, you know, that's just the way it is. He is meant to be a big heel in, in the company as a, as a figure. He came in like a hero because people knew then that it was either going to be... It, it was more than likely going to be Triple H winning the championship from that point. Yeah. Lesnar's gone. Reigns is in there, but they, he kind of copped on. Once Triple H came out, he kind of realised what was going on at that point. And I thought they did a great thing here where when it gets down to the last three, you've got 
Reigns, Ambrose, and um, and Triple H. Triple H dumps out Reigns first. I thought it got this awesome moment then where you've got Dean Ambrose and Triple H as the last two. And you've got this really cool like last couple of minutes where you just don't know. You think, okay, they're going to give it to Triple H, but there's just this little chance. Are they actually going to give it to There's a little Dean? glimmer of hope that it could, yeah. Yeah. Are they going to make him a double champion just out of nowhere? Just really fuck with everyone's ideas of what WrestleMania was going to be. But obviously that isn't the case. Triple H uh, dumps him over. He wins the Royal Rumble. One of the only uh, few. I think Undertaker won from number 30 as well. I think he's the only other guy. Maybe I'm wrong. But he wins the WWE Championship. He is the new WWE Champion. Some people are very much against this. They're like, well, this was horrible. I didn't like the uh, the finish. I don't like... I'd, I'll Triple H, you know, Chess the Champion again. I'm like... It's like you, you get some people who probably shit on this whole, whole pay for you. Like, yeah. it was a terrible rumble. It was like, it was a good rumble. Yeah. Like, to pay, like even regardless to the finish. Guys, I don't have that much of a problem with, with the ending of this match. I really don't. You know, Triple H becoming the champion. It's not as if he's he's on the show every week anyway, and it's not as if he's going to be champion for long. He's not going to be champion past WrestleMania. Yeah. Um, I've got no problem with this. He could even lose it before Mania. He could end up having the match at Fastlane, right? So, and look at and people are looking at. Oh, oh, this is so bad. Think of it this way, guys. What if they had gone with the other plan, which is Roman Reigns actually wins the thing and actually retains his championship? then that would have been the wrong choice. That would have been a choice that would have soured what would have been a, what was a very good Royal Rumble match. Yeah. Matt, the best Royal Rumble match probably in three, four years. Easy, right? Probably even more than that. Quite simply, yeah. Yeah. Um, you, you may not like Triple H becoming the champion, but when you look at the alternatives, you might say, oh yeah, they could have given it to Dean Ambrose. Sure they could, and that was that was fun. But the other alternative is that you give it back to Roman Reigns. And I always thought that was going to be a horrendous idea. It made no sense to me. But now they can run with the storyline of uh, Triple H. He's now got now there's nothing stopping him. He's got a full stranglehold. He's got the title. He's got the power. And they can build up this whole redemption thing for Reigns to be the one to, to break down the authority. Hopefully. And we'll see where it goes from there. Matt. I thought this Royal Rumble was fantastic. I really had a lot of fun with this Royal Rumble. Yeah, what about you? Definitely. I enjoyed it. Yeah. There were some very good points. But I, mean, I will admit, I will admit, there was a bit where I was starting to get a bit lax and sort of like, mm, uh. Yeah, I, from like, like, uh, entrant 20 to like 28, things have really slowed down a little bit at that point. Yeah. And like, even when Ziggler came out, I couldn't care. Yeah, because you knew he was going out soon anyway. But um, but yeah, it picked up again at the end and people got really into it. People were very into the end. When Triple H eliminated Reigns, he was treated like AJ Styles having his debut. Yeah. Like, you know, it's funny when you look at it that way. And like, I love Triple H. He just told him to suck it repeatedly. Like, I thought that was funny. So yeah, Matt, I thought this is... Matt, I thought... If you stack this up to the last two Royal Rumbles, it's easily a mile ahead of them. They were they were poor, oh, yeah. poor shows. This one was good. I think from top to bottom, you've got good wrestling. You've got some interesting matches. You've got title changes. You've got new storylines that can go forward. You've got an awesome moment with that debut of AJ Styles. You had a very good showing in that match. Um you got a little bit of Brock Lesnar. I mean, Brock Lesnar wasn't really the star of this show, but you still got to see a lot of suplexes, so that's always fun. And yeah, I guys, I thought this was um, a, I thought this was a very very good pay per view to start that's off it. the show. I find it quite odd because I was just seen on um, Facebook WWE have just posted up. So, which WWE Royal Rumble entrant did you least expect to see? It's like, really, <laughs> really. I, and you know what's funny, Matt, as well, talking about this? Maybe we should bring this up at the episodic thing. Talking of a certain AJ Styles, right? Um, it's funny that WWE put up like an article on the website going, everything that you need to know about AJ Styles now, he, now that he's come to WWE. And yet again, as they always do, made absolutely zero reference to TNA. They refer to it as just that he was wrestling in Florida. Yeah, that's all, that's all they say. Don't make any reference to it. You know? Well, it, what I mean, they don't... 
refer to TNA as the company. They just say, yeah. oh, he's, yeah, he was around there sometime, and he showed back up in Japan. So oh. TNA put a tweet out going, oh, congratulations on on TNA original AJ Styles making his debut. And I'm like, just get over it, guys. Just leave it go. Just leave it. Like, no one... <laughs> give up. Just give, give up. up. Give up with it. Right. Before Dixie... we wrap up, I find it quite odd, actually. Mm-hmm. Like, with the entrance. Okay. Like, the people that were in. Okay. Of the New Day, we only had Kofi. Mm hmm. But there was no surprise. Well, obviously, you had a pretty fucking big surprise entrance. I think you had two, no... really. Huh? Yeah. You had, you had Triple H and AJ Styles. Okay, yeah, you had Triple H. But, you know, like, there's, there, there wasn't any, like, Haxel or anything like that. What, well, legends to come in, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but. It's not necessary. It's not. I think that it would have been good if they put one legend in there, but at the end of the day, that's like really nitpicking, guys. I I'm really... still pissed that the Dudleys didn't go in. Yeah, yeah. Cause, but cause... then what they did with Henry and <laughs> Swagger, I can't Swa- gladly... Swagger lasted 15 seconds. Henry lasted 30. There yeah. you go. That that tells you how prestigious winning that match on the pre-show was. I feel really sad for Mark Henry. They were building up that like this was going to be his last hurrah. And he could be barely lasted like a minute. Oh, well, he he did last shot, a minute. Yeah. yeah. Lasted 30 seconds. Jeez. But all in all, as I said, guys, if I were going to tell you a review of this show, I would say this was a great show. I honestly, I, I heavily recommend that you watch the Royal Rumble this year. I thought it was, uh, the matches on it were good. The Royal Rumble itself was, uh, was quite fun and entertaining. I guarantee you guys that if you're a fan of AJ Styles, you're going to watch this debut over and over again, and you're going to want to see him. Like, it's people that... I've, I've already heard of people re-watching the Rumble just to see Styles in it again, because they loved how much, you know, that he was in there for, like, a good 30 oh, minutes. That's great. Yeah. Um, so, awesome. Awesome stuff. Really good. Um, and also, there was that great moment as well, just to go with the Styles. When Styles and Owens are... Are like battering the hell out of each other. The fans just went mental. They're like, okay, oh, yeah. this is exactly the sort of stuff we want. So, brilliant stuff. I tell you what, for all the rumors that, that Styles has got back problems, the back bumps he was taking, <laughs> he was certainly putting it up to scratch. Like, if he's got I was back say, problems, I think these rumors are false. <laughs> but even if uh, I, I'm under no illusion that he's got some sort of back problems, but hell, was he was he trying to put people off the scent, or like you say, Matt, he's just got nothing at all and everything's. Um, just everything's just fine but regardless he was taking some that back body drop jesus the Mental. height Kalisto would struggle to get that height right and he's and he's like half the size of like fucking styles right that is some talent right there mate matt do you feel a little bit sad we didn't get to see one styles clash in the whole of the match and they kept teasing it he did it's constantly just like eh, no yeah. oh Eh, no, not this time. Oh, what if? <laughs> um, well, that people one. may remember back in the day, I've actually said to people that I'm not a big fan of that move, but that's because of its tendency to injure people. But still, uh, yeah, that's that, that's a conversation for another time anyway. I'm still a still a, a fan of, of Styles, and obviously it was a lot of fun. So yeah, thumbs up, guys. Good stuff. Really enjoyed this. Go and watch it if you haven't already. You will have a blast it is better. I thankfully, maybe I've got this a little bit better. I managed to keep all the spoilers away, and I managed to watch this completely spoiler-free. So I didn't know when Styles came out. I didn't know Triple H was coming at number thirty. So it helped, you know. And uh, I think some people that maybe are a little bit less happy with it is because they're watching it after already knowing what happened. Um, you know, it takes some of the sheen off it a little bit, but but still. Uh, all right, the Matt. Is there anything else that you want to cover before we wrap up this? Uh, this pay-per-view review? Uh, no. No problem, guys. I hope you did enjoy this extra. We haven't actually done one of these in a while, and it's going to be a jam-packed week of LTW, because on Thursday, you've got the Lucha Underground Season 2 uh, debut, you know, it's premiere. Mm-hmm. Oh, on Wednesday, sorry, and the review of it comes out on the Thursday, so that's where it's coming out. Are you excited for that, Matt? Are you excited? I'm off Thursday as well, so no full well. It's just I like eh, time to watch. Well, in which case, I might have to hound you for the recording of that then. So I suppose so. There you go. <laughs> um, so you, now you've told me, I'm just not. I'm just not going to let it go. It's just, just, just the way it has to be. Um, so yeah, a lot. And obviously, at the end uh, at this weekend, you've got the the episodic episode 111, 111. There you go. Anyone know? Anyone that's a cricket fan knows why. Uh, 
why that's a particularly interesting number. But uh, people funny realising that I'm a cricket fan. Yes, there are fans of cricket. I don't know. We are rare, but... All right, guys. If you did enjoy this uh, episode, then uh, please subscribe to the uh, to the channel. You can be part of what we're hoping to get as 1,000 subscribers by the end of this year. You can uh, follow us on our uh, on our Facebook page. You can like it there, interact with us, which is a lot of fun. Facebook.com slash Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast. And Matt, I'm sure there's a Twitter handle somewhere. There is at Talk Wrestle Pod. It is indeed. It is indeed. Uh, so you can, there's plenty of ways to interact with us, and obviously you can leave your comments in the comment section below. Leave any questions. You can leave them here, and that will get um, put up on the next episodic episode this week. And apart from that, we hope you have a great time. Hope Raw is good tonight. I know this is coming out on the Tuesday, so you you know you guys may already know. But regardless, I'm sure that uh, we'll have plenty to talk about over the weekend. So have a great time, and we'll speak to you then. Catch you soon. All right then, guys. Bye bye.